So when I was young, I never liked my blood drawn during blood tests. One thing is, I was scared of needles. I still am. Secondly, I was very curious about why they were taking my blood. What would they do with it and what could it tell them that would help them cure my disease? All those questions used to pop up in my head whenever I went for a blood test. Like, what is blood, first of all? What is in it? Why is it red? All these questions were answered as I grew up and I started learning more about blood and what is it. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video as well. We're going to be answering some of these questions regarding blood. So first of all, we'll start with what is blood? So blood is a liquid connective tissue. What does liquid connective tissue mean? A connective tissue is something that, you know, connects and supports something in our body. Like bone and cartilage are types of connective tissue in our body. But when we say bone, you immediately associate it with something that is hard, right? But blood is not hard. In fact, blood is liquid. It keeps flowing. It is a viscous liquid. So how can blood be a connective tissue well, that's because it's a special type of connective tissue. It is dynamic in the sense that it is constantly traveling throughout the body, but it literally connects one part of the body to another because it transports substances all throughout the body like oxygen, carbon dioxide, hormones, anything that needs to be transported from one part of the body, like say your brain, to other parts of the body, like say to the extreme tippy toes of your foot. That is taken care of by the blood, which is why it is a connective tissue. Adult human beings on average have around 5 to 6 liters of blood. So when we talk about the components of blood, when we ask ourselves, what is blood made up of? The answer is that majority of blood is a straw colored fluid known as plasma. 55% of blood is plasma. 45% is made up of the red blood cells and less than 1% of blood is made up of platelets and white blood cells. So how do we get this? Because if you take blood in a test tube, it's just going to be red in color, right? You're not going to see any straw colored fluid. How do we get this straw color fluid that is plasma from blood? So to get plasma from blood, what we're going to do is that we're going to take blood in a test tube that is coated with something known as an anticoagulant. An anticoagulant is something that prevents blood from clotting up together. So this is very important because otherwise we'll not be able to separate the components of blood. So we're going to coat the test tube with an anticoagulant, fill it with blood and then we're going to spin it through a machine known as the centrifuge. In the centrifuge, the test tubes are going to spin very fast. And because of the centrifugal force that is generated at that time, substances are going to settle based on their weight. The heavier substance is going to settle at the bottom as the pellet and the lighter substance is going to settle at the top as the supernatant. So when you separate blood in a centrifuge, the fluid that remains on the top is what is plasma. Now, why is it straw colored? Because it is made up of everything except white blood cells, red blood cells and platelets. And since it is the RBC that gives blood its red color, plasma without RBC is straw colored, is whitish or yellowish in color. But what is in plasma and what is the function of plasma? So these are some of the components of plasma. Unsurprisingly, 95% of plasma is water. It's just water with a lot of substances dissolved in it. What are the substances dissolved in it? It could be proteins like albumin, fibrinogen, globulin, electrolytes like sodium, calcium, magnesium, all the ions that are circulating throughout your body, they are also dissolved in plasma. Clotting factors are also types of proteins. They are involved in blood clotting like factor 3, factor X and even fibrinogen is also involved in blood clotting. We'll talk more about this when we're talking about the blood coagulation process. Glucose, other nutrients, amino acids, all these that are circulating throughout the body which need to be taken from one part to another is actually dissolved in plasma. Hormones that are secreted by glands like luteinizing hormone or growth hormone or even insulin, 
all these are actually dissolved in plasma so plasma can be thought of as the major transporting factor for all the non cellular components of blood anything that is not a cell like white blood cell or red blood cell or platelet they are suspended in plasma and transported through plasma in the body so plasma performs a variety of functions like it's involved in the blood clotting process in maintaining the electrolyte balance in maintaining the fluid balance in the ph of the body if you remember from the previous chapter this bicarbonate ion is involved in the bicarbonate buffer system which maintains the blood ph right so all that is done by the plasma of the blood with this let's move on to white blood cells so in this video we'll focus mainly on plasma and white blood cells in another video we'll talk about red blood cells and platelets so white blood cells are also known as leukocytes leuco means white or colorless because they are not red in color unlike red blood cells white blood cells are also known as leukocytes white blood cells are basically the immune cells in our body they are involved in the immune response or protecting our body from foreign invaders like pathogens viruses bacteria parasites even cancerous cells our own cells that have become cancerous or dead or damaged cells that need to be removed from the body all those are done by our immune cells immune cells are basically of two types granulocytes and agranulocytes granulocytes are named so because they have granules in their cytoplasm these granules store and release a lot of substances like enzymes antimicrobial agents substances like heparin and histamine each of these has a specific function in the immune response granulocytes are basically of three major types neutrophils constitute the majority of granulocytes there are around 60 to 65 percentage of wbcs then we have eosinophils which are around 1 to 3 percentage of wbcs and we have basophils which are less than 1 percentage of wbcs so the common thing between all these types of cells is the presence of cytoplasmic granules in their cell so what do these granulocytes do in our body mainly they are involved in fighting of bacterial infections the granules they contain antimicrobial agents right so they are involved in fighting of bacterial infections and also phagocytosis which is where the immune cell sort of goes and engulfs the bacterial cell like this and then once it is engulfed inside the bacterial cell is destroyed so neutrophils are capable of performing this phagocytosis function in the granulocytes they are also involved in the inflammatory response so say that you get a cut in your skin after a while you notice that the skin has become slightly reddish in color it hurts that place it hurts and it has slightly swollen up also so that is all part of the inflammatory response this is mainly to make sure that the site is not infected with bacteria because it's an open wound right so bacteria from the environment should not enter through this site so the inflammatory response makes sure that the region is sealed off very quickly and no pathogens enter the body through this open wound granulocytes are also involved in the allergic reaction histamine which is released by granulocytes is mainly involved in the allergic reaction say you are allergic to peanuts when you eat peanuts your throat closes up you start sweating you start coughing your eyes start watering all those reactions are mediated by histamine so these are the functions of granulocytes a granulocytes on the other hand are named so because they don't have any granules in the cytoplasm a granulocytes are of two types lymphocytes which make up 20 to 30 percentage of wbcs and monocytes which make up 2 to 8 percentage of wbcs lymphocytes are of two types b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes are very important in the adaptive immune response in our body the b and t lymphocytes are majorly involved in the adaptive immune response so when we talk about the function of a granulocytes it's mainly in the humoral and cell mediated immunity humoral immunity is regulated by the b cells or the b lymphocytes cell mediated immunity is regulated by the t cells or the t lymphocytes antibody release is also done by a granulocytes these b cells when they encounter a specific pathogen they divide into two types of cells plasma cells and memory cells 
So these plasma cells are the ones that secrete antibodies. Antibodies are nothing but proteins. They are immunoglobulins. They are involved in fighting off bacterial or viral infections. They go and specifically bind to a specific type of pathogen. And then they cause the immune response by destroying this pathogen. T cells are also involved in fighting off cancer cells. They detect damaged cells that could potentially cause cancer and they go and destroy those cells. The immune memory is also maintained by B lymphocytes. So when B lymphocytes divide, they produce memory B cells as well. These stay in our circulation for a long time. And when the same pathogen invades for a second time later in the future, immune memory is activated. The B cells immediately secrete more antibodies and they immediately destroy the pathogen before it can cause a future infection. This is the basis of vaccination and immunization. A granulocytes are also involved in phagocytosis. Monocytes are the ones that are capable of performing phagocytosis. So altogether, A granulocytes and granulocytes are majorly involved in protecting our body from foreign invaders, cancerous cells, even our own dead and damaged cells that need to be cleared off from the body. All those processes are mediated by our white blood cells. We'll end this video right here. We'll continue this video where we talk about red blood cells and platelets.